Happy Wednesday, everyone. Hope you are enjoying some pretty chilly weather today and uh, that you've been keeping up with the hearings of uh, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. Just finished watching uh, Senator Cory Booker's amazing remarks and I'm literally trying to fight tearing up before this live. Um, but yeah, we'll get started momentarily. Today we're talking about clitoracy or clitoris literacy and uh, going through the anatomy of it and um, just kind of the pleasure station that it is. So uh, tell your friends to join or they can come back and watch this live later on, but we will get started momentarily. Hope folks have been learning some good stuff. I know that every week that I'm on here, I repeat uh, information about peeing after sex because I think it's the, one of the most valuable tips anyone could ever share. Uh, so of course I'll be doing that again. Hey Paul, how are you? So oh, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining. Uh, cool, we will get started. Um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, Whitman Walker's Community Health Department has expanded its outreach efforts to include social media. We cover various topics about HIV, STIs, and sexual health practices to accessing care and social determinants of health and public health interventions. The community health team is here to educate and support you. My name is Jewel and I use she, her pronouns. Uh, so the clitoris can be a bit of a mythical creature for some and not for others. So today we'll be discussing clitoracy or clitoris literacy. We'll also be reviewing a few tips from last week on how vaginal uh, and frontal health tips, uh, on what vaginal and frontal health tips you can uh, use just to support your health and well-being. So let's go over a little bit of review. Uh, first, it's so important to urinate or pee after sex or intercourse. Peeing after sex helps minimize your chance of getting a UTI or a urinary tract infection. This is when bacteria gets into your urethra and may cause painful or frequent urination. By peeing after sex, you help filter out any bacteria that might have creeped up into and around your urethra during sex. And this tip is, is applicable to people who have penises or are born and assigned uh, male at birth, as well as, of course, to women and people who are assigned female at as birth. <laughs> as well as to women and people who were assigned female at birth. Our next tip is when you use the bathroom, be sure to wipe from front to back, uh, AKA start up by your clitoris and your urethra and move your way down towards your vagina and front hole uh, or anus or butthole. Uh, this helps to keep bacteria away from your vagina slash front hole and away from your urethra. Wiping from back to front will literally put your vagina or front hole in the line of fire. <laughs> Uh, sorry, and your urethra in the line of fire bacteria and can lead to an infection. So this tip is also applicable to folks with penises or who are assigned male at birth. So uh, key takeaway, always uh, wipe front to back and always pee after sex. Finally, uh, last week we talked about how to perform a self-exam at home. Um, just a reminder that if you want to do that, you'll just need the following tools, a mirror, a pillow, a small flashlight, gloves for your hands, and a diagram of your vulva. And when conducting your own self-exam, just be on the lookout for cuts, bumps, and colorful or foul-smelling discharge. That'll be a signal to you about whether it might be time to go to the doctor or uh, get tested. On to clitoris. So the clitoris is a small, on the outside, uh, sensitive part of the female or um, for folks who are assigned female at birth genitalia that can become more prominent when a person is aroused. This is thanks to the blood being rushed to the region. Many, if not most people with a uh, clitoris need some part of it to be stimulated in order to have an orgasm. Uh, an orgasm is defined as a climax of sexual excitement characterized by feelings of pleasure censored in the genitals. And for people with penises or who were assigned male at birth, this is also characterized by ejaculation or ejection of sperm. The clitoris also has a nickname of the pleasure nub. So a few facts about the clitoris. Um, so the clitoris is a much more sensitive muscle than the penis. It holds about 8,000 nerve endings, and that's twice as many as the penis holds. It is the key to pleasuring a person with the clitoris, despite the large social emphasis on uh, insertive and penetrative sex. The clitoris is also a lot bigger than folks think. Uh, in fact, uh, think of it like the tip of an iceberg. You can only see about a quarter of the full clitoris externally, but there can be about four, in four inches of clitoral tissue internally. Uh, that just isn't visible to the human eye or externally. 
Next, when a person is aroused, the clitoris will nearly double in size. So if you're paying super close attention or have a mic or have a magnifying glass handy, you might visually see how well things are going with a sex partner, but please note that the growth will only be about one to three millimeters different. Uh, as a person gets older, their clitoris will continue to grow, but the clitoris actually doesn't ever age. So there's no difference in the clitoris at age 25 versus at age 55, other than that, other than that it's increased in size. And given that the clitoris grows with age, there's more opportunity for clitoris uh, for clitoral simulation and pleasure for folks with clitori as they age. Uh, but be sure to couple that pleasure with more lube and optional hormones, given that it's easier to experience tearing and cuts in the vagina and front holes as a person gets older. And again, we know that, uh, you know, the more that you are experiencing grips and tears uh, in um, the anus or uh, in the vagina or front hole, the more susceptible or at risk you are for experiencing an STI. Um, so just, you know, use lube. It's, it's both for pleasure and for safety. Uh, the clitoris is also the only human organ where its only purpose is pleasure. So that's why it gets that pleasure nub uh, nickname. And then uh, the or orgasms caused by clitoral stimulation release a lot of oxytocin. Uh, the better or more intense the orgasm is, the more oxytocin is secreted. And so this is a hormone or a neurotransmitter that is involved in childbirth and breastfeeding. And it's also associated with empathy, trust, sexual activity, and relationship building. So it's sometimes referred to as the love, the love hormone um, because uh, levels of oxytocin uh, increase during hugging and orgasm. So now that we know a few facts about the clitoris, here's just a rundown of some clitoral anatomy from healthline.com. So the glands clitoris is... Uh, the external nub many folks think of when picturing the clitoris, even though it's the size of a pea, it holds thousands of nerve endings, again, double the amount that the penis has. The clitoral hood uh, is kind of like a good hoodie. Uh, it's, the, it's, it's the same, or like any good hoodie, it's the same for the clitoris. Uh, the labia minora connects to form the clitoral hood, and when you're aroused, the hood retracts a little bit to slightly expose the, the glands, uh, or the part that we're all normal uh, used to seeing as the clitoris. The clitoral body is internal. It connects to the glands and is suspended from the pubic bone via a ligament. The corpora cavernosa uh, is uh, part of the clitoral body. So the clitoral body consists of two corpora cavernosa that become erect during arousal. And we've got the pa paired crura. The clitoral body branches off to form two appendages. Uh, these legs straddle the urethra and the vaginal canal and become enlarged with blood when, when you're turned on or aroused. And finally, we have the vestibular bulbs. The vestibular bulbs form an upside down heart shape uh, with the urethra and the vaginal canal, the heart's cleavage. The bulbs re reach through and behind the labia around the vaginal canal and toward the anus. They also swell uh, when you are hot and bothered or aroused. Uh, that's all that we have for kind of the clitoris uh, facts and um, anatomy for today. But next week we'll be diving into self-pleasure and masturbation. So. Uh, stay tuned for next week and we'll go over some of that information and of course if you need to access free hiv or sci testing we've got a comment pinned below you can call whitman walker health at 202-797-4439 to schedule a testing appointment uh, in northwest or southeast dc you can also visit your local health department's website to figure out uh, the nearest testing location near you uh, and because we're still living in the COVID 19 pandemic and have just entered the third year of the pandemic together uh, just wanted to give you a few reminders about COVID-19 and vaccines. If you've already gotten your COVID-19 vaccine, congratulations. You've taken a really uh, big and important step to helping prevent yourself, your loved ones, and your community from getting sick. Um, you know, multiple variants are always swirling around and popping up and, and uh, you know, just on the move. So, um, you know, be careful out there. Uh, keep your distance, wear your mask. You know, the, the vaccine isn't 100% effective at preventing um, COVID-19 infection, but it is really effective at preventing severe hospitalization, uh, severe illness and death as it relates to COVID-19. Um, that said, if you still want to wear your mask, uh, not a problem. If you, It's a good practice to ask people here around whether or not that they are vaccinated and just kind of what precautions uh, for COVID-19 they've been taking so that you know how to best protect yourself. If you haven't been vaccinated and you're looking to get a vaccine appointment, Whitman Walker Health has vaccine available. Everyone ages 12 and up is eligible to receive the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, and people ages 16 and up are eligible to receive a COVID-19 vaccine. Please reach out to Whitman Walker at 202-207-2480 if you want to schedule a vaccine appointment. 
Uh, and if you're having trouble making a vaccine appointment with us, you can always uh, visit coronavirus.dc.gov. Uh, if you're living in the DC area, you can also call 1-855-363-0333. Uh, if you're living in Maryland, you can go to covidlink.maryland.gov or call 1-855-634-6829. Um, and then if you're in Prince George's County or Montgomery County, you can visit their registration and, and vaccine portals online. And for the Montgomery County one, you can also call 240-777-0311 to schedule an appointment. Uh, finally, for Virginia residents, you can visit vaccinate.virginia.gov or call 1-877-829-4682. Now, if you haven't been vaccinated and you're not looking for an appointment, uh, please continue to follow CDC guidelines for mask wearing, quarantining, social distancing, and the like. It's super important that you continue to uh, follow those guidelines, but also that you consider getting the vaccine and just discuss uh, COVID precautionary measures with those around you and be mindful of mask and, wear and keeping your distance, but especially when you don't know if someone who you're around is vaccinated. Uh, remember to follow our team on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Whitman Walker and check our website at www.whitman-walker.org for the latest on our services. And uh, give us a call if you need to access any resources or services through Whitman Walker at 202-797-4439. Again, that number is pinned in the comment section. It's 240 sorry, it's 202-797-4439. But call us for anything that you need. Uh, we're happy to connect you to our team and resources and follow our family programs and uh, just what Walker family in general at Real Talk DC underscore and No Filter DC. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.